So there I was, drinking my sorrows away in the dirty old rat-infested San Denis saloon. The reason why I'm doing this is because I realized that my life was basically meaningless. No job, no friends, no wife, well, no tolerable wife that is, but that's besides the point. To summarize it all up, I just felt really useless. That was until I had an amazing idea. You may be wondering what my amazing idea was. Well, to keep it short, I decided to become a serial killer. Serial killers usually look unstable, menacing, and downright deadly. The only thing I looked like was a 30-year-old man who got hired to play a cowboy at a 7-year-old's birthday party. I obviously had to change that. Okay, are you guys ready to see my official serial killer outfit? In 3, 2, 1, here it is. I decided to go with the fancy but still frightening approach. Before I start, I have to tell you guys the most important aspect of this video. Instead of killing everybody who comes in a 20-foot radius of me, I decided to spin a wheel to decide which kills I'll need to pull off. Will I be able to become a serial killer in Red Dead Redemption 2? Let's find out. Okay, it's the first kill of the video. Hopefully I get something good. Oh, nice. Ever since I was a little kid, I always dreamed of feeding somebody to an alligator. I saw these two guys trying to open a safe, so I knocked one of them out and took the other one for my alligator feeding adventure. I would normally take the money as well, but remember, I'm a serial killer now. The only thing that matters in my life is the smell of blood. Specifically, human blood. Once I found an alligator, I put the guy in front of it and watched as the alligator chomped his head off. That was everything I could have hoped for and more. As much as I would love to keep on feeding people to alligators, I gotta move on to the next kill. Awesome! I do love committing vehicular manslaughter, so this should be fun. Once I found a wagon, I stole it, and instead of finding some random NPC, I decided to run over the guy I stole it from. I checked to see if he was dead, and surprisingly he was only knocked out, so I ran him over again and he was still not dead. A couple minutes of running over this guy later, I was finally able to kill him. He may be dead, but we'll always remember him as one of the most durable NPCs in Red Dead Redemption 2. Rest in peace. You will not, I, I mean, I mean, you will be missed. I'm starting to get nauseous due to being away from the smell of blood for too long, so let's move on to the next kill. Definitely one of the more simple options on the wheel, but I'll take whatever I can get. I came across some guy who challenged me to a bottle shooting contest. I may specialize in killing people, but I'm always up for trying something new, so I accepted the challenge. I was obviously able to win. The NPC wasn't too happy about me winning, so he challenged me to a bird shooting contest. Like I said before, I'm always up for trying something new, so I accepted the challenge. Unlike last time, I wasn't able to win the contest. It's fine though, I'll be a good sport. Not bad, but not good enough. Maybe next time. Oh, well, you tried, but you lost. And now, you owe. Forget what I just said. Anyways, let's move on to the next kill. Now that's what I'm talking about. I decided to take full advantage of this kill by going to the tallest bridge in Red Dead Redemption 2. Now, to kill someone using height, I'm gonna, you know, need someone to kill, so I started looking around. I eventually came across a lady that asked if I could take her to Emerald Ranch. I obviously agreed to help her. Little did she know that the only thing I'd be helping her with was breaking the Guinness World Record for the highest fall in the 1900s. Once we got to the bridge, I told the lady what we'd actually be doing, and let's just say she wasn't too enthusiastic. Sometimes in life you gotta do stuff that you really don't wanna do, so I threw her off the bridge anyway. I'll definitely be checking out next year's Guinness Book of World Records to see if she made it in. Before I move on to the next kill, if you haven't already, make sure to like and subscribe. It would really help out the channel, let alone make me a very happy content creator. Anyways, with all of that out of the way, let's get back to the video. Oh, nice. I could always just drown somebody in a nearby body of water, but what would be the fun in that? Instead, I decided to kill somebody by throwing them into a geyser. 
Now, that may sound like a horrifically violent way to die, but if you stop and think about it for a second, it's actually a, um... You know, on second thought, it actually is just a horrifically violent way to die, but I'm a serial killer, so I don't really care. As much as I'd love to stay and take in the sweet smell of boiling flesh, I gotta move on to the next kill. This should be interesting. I came across some guy who accidentally stepped in his own bear trap. He looked like he was in excruciating pain, so I decided to make it 10 times worse. After running him over about 15 times, I checked to see if he was dead, and yeah, he was definitely dead. Now, I may have just used my horse to run over this guy who was already in immense pain, but by no means am I a monster, so I obviously tried to get his lifeless body out of the bear trap. Sadly, I failed, but remember, it's the thought that counts. Ignoring my attempt at trying to not sound like a total psychopath, let's move on to the next kill. Definitely very different, but I'll take whatever I can get. Once I found a boat, all I had to do was find an innocent NPC, so I started snooping around. I eventually came across a very angry man. I decided to lighten him up by taking him on an all-expenses-paid boat ride. He wasn't really enjoying it, which made me kinda angry because I planned this entire thing out just for the two of us. In fact, I was so angry that I decided to load a couple of rounds into the boat. The only issue with this is that John can't swim, and as you could probably tell, I'm in the middle of a pretty big lake. I tried to doggy paddle back to shore, but sadly I wasn't able to make it. Not that it matters though, since I can just respawn. The angry man, on the other hand, cannot, which means that we can officially move on to the next kill. When I say this is the best kill so far, you better believe it's the best kill so far. Also, when I say you better believe it's the best kill so far, I mean it, because if you don't, I may or may not have to come after you. Ignoring my very humble and non-threatening remark, you may be wondering how I'm supposed to use an NPC to kill another NPC. Well, if I just so happen to irritate an NPC and then the NPC just so happen to start shooting at me, the law will come out and brutally murder said NPC. I just realized that I said the word NPC five times. <sighs> Six times in the span of a minute. I should probably stop while I'm ahead, so let's move on to the final kill. I beat the entire game only using throwables, so I can already tell that this kill is going to be a piece of cake. What better place to complete the easiest kill of the video than in the sick, dying, and pretty disgusting town known as Armadillo? Just look at all of these helpless people that I could use as a dartboard. In the end, I obviously decided to kill... the shopkeeper. Did you guys really think that I was going to murder one of those already dying NPCs? I may be a serial killer, but come on, I'm not that bad. I killed the shopkeeper with a Molotov cocktail, followed by another Molotov cocktail, which was then followed by yet another Molotov cocktail. If you couldn't already tell, I take a lot of pride in my originality. Just to make sure he was dead, I also threw a stick of dynamite at him. I know it's kinda hard to tell, but trust me, he is definitely dead. But anyways, if you guys enjoyed the video, consider leaving a like, and if you haven't already and you like my content, make sure to subscribe. Anyways, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.